After and Before, a reflection for the third Sunday of Easter. As mentioned last week, the Acts adventures continue in this Sunday's first reading. Having escaped the local jail with angelic assistance, Peter and the apostles turn up again in the temple area, recommence teaching in the name of Jesus, and soon find themselves under interrogation by the Sanhedrin. When they rise above the heavy-handed questions with, we must obey God rather than men, they are flogged, warned again, and dismissed, and return to the growing community, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. Clearly, these once fearful followers are fast becoming courageous and compelling leaders. Keep this after Pentecost picture in mind. Psalm 30's refrain, I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me, might easily have accompanied the apostles' journey home. As often occurs in the book of Psalms, the psalmist uses I language, though actually speaking for the community. In verse 2, the point of view shifts as the psalmist issues a formal invitation for all to join in the song. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. The third line of verse 2 makes a firm connection to the adventures unfolding in Acts. At nightfall, weeping enters in, but with the dawn, rejoicing. Second readings in lectionary cycle C come from the book of Revelation, the most extensive example of apocalyptic end times writing in the New Testament. Like the book of Daniel in the Old Testament and brief passages in the Gospels, Revelation speaks to the end of the world as people knew it at the time, in this case the world of Roman domination. Although his own bold proclamation of the Gospel has landed him on the island of Patmos, John's message rings with hope. His description of being caught up in the spirit indicates a trance in which he experiences a vision of the heavenly realm and one like a son of man in stunning array. Like others before him, example Isaiah and Ezekiel, he falls down as though dead at the sight of the glorious one and requires a restorative touch before he can take in the vision and take up his role as recorder. Jesus Christ, risen and glorified, reassures John, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. This vision, cosmic in scale, signals a fundamental shift in the way things are. Death and those who deal in death have been defeated. Their days are numbered. They just don't know it yet. Today's reading from John's Gospel flashes back to the before Pentecost picture of Peter and the disciples. With the traumatic experience of Jesus' suffering and death still weighing on their minds and the stunning reality of resurrection yet to sink in, the seven, Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, James, John, and two more, attempt to restore some sense of normalcy by doing what they once did every day, fishing. After a luckless night, see Psalm 30 above, 
they take the advice of a stranger on the shore and catch a multitude. Then the light dawns. It is the Lord. Peter swims to shore and the others bring the boat and the net full of fish. Awe, hunger, and a good portion of shame make for a quiet breakfast with the master, with each one likely thinking back to their last supper with him and their subsequent flight from the scene of his arrest. Peter, bearing the greatest burden of failure, must undo his threefold denial with equal declarations of devotion to Jesus and then accept the new charge, feed my sheep. Jesus then gives Peter a glimpse of the end of his life's journey and says gently but firmly, follow me.